So what you gonna do, brother? We about to run wild with a style like no other. So somebody call Brodus Clay mother and tell her Richard runs on the men like Ed Lover. And Doc Dre, what Scott say, what they hang on every word like it's something that the Rock say. No JR, but they talking wrestling. We bring the noise with the boys, so we don't like castling. So masculine, who's in machismo? Mutton chop shop, Gran Turismo. No free throws, snout hoops and heels. It's Steve Ross retirement, give me the super feels. Straight shoot, it's real. Drop a pipe bomb, get rid of the bull like the Rock's right arm. So stay calm, tranquilo, I'll go Naito and give him destino. And we know that you chumps ain't ready for the heartbreak runs and the Cuban Genetti. They drop a heavy tag team it like Teddy. Long go strong with the heat like Eddie. So steady like when Taker walk the tight rope. Spaz like Taz with the mic and a tight choke. Dirtiest player in the game with the eye poke. 1988 Macho Man on a lot of coke. These other cats are a waste. They boring illegitimate sons like Jason Jordan. And Richard Runs never give him respect unless they going on air with a broken freaking neck. So bounce like Papa Pump's pecs. Every time they get down, they bound to catch wreck. Y'all don't know nada. They the Okadas. You're the Washington Generals. They the Globetrotters. A whole lot of podcasts in the scene, but Richard Runs running wild is the cast of your dreams. So it seems these two is too sweet. Bullet Club pulling up with schemes to delete. So retreat, we steal, we cheat. But I never lie, I swear on these beats. Do you want to let everyone know that you get it? Do you not want to be a Melvin? Well, then listen to the Running Wild podcast. And if you don't, you know what you are. I'm the last real man, Silas Young. And if you're any kind of man, you'll be listening to the Running Wild Podcast. Hi guys, this is Mandy Leon, and you're listening to the Running Wild Podcast. This is Sam Adonis, El Hudo de las Chicas, the CMLL, and you are listening to the Running Wild Podcast. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Running Wild Podcast. I'm your co-host, Rich. Alongside me, as always, my co-host, Runs. Yes, sir. So before we get started, I want to remind you that we're brought to you in partnership with PWPonderings.com, ROHWorld.com, and LastWordOnProWrestling.com. And we are featured on the Wrestling to the Max Network. we got a big week uh, to discuss this. We have name changes. We have a pretty good Monday Night Raw. I think there was some sort of pay-per-view on Sunday, perhaps. And yeah. uh, Shane McMahon making really weird noises at the end of SmackDown. So uh, let's get started with really the big news this week. WWE Fastlane, probably one of the biggest pay-per-views of the year. I don't even... I, okay, I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I'm just... I'm lying to you. The, I thought it was better... Overall, I think it was better than I thought it was going to be. Like, I, I expected it to be god-awful. I didn't watch the, right. the, the pre-show because I just... When you don't announce the match for the pre-show, look, CMLL runs five shows a week, and they always have announced matches. Like, I don't even understand how you manage to not just announce it. Like, why? why? Even if the match doesn't matter, like it didn't matter, it was what, Mojo Rawley and uh, uh, Titus Worldwide versus oh, right. uh, the, I'm sorry, the the Fashion Police and uh, Ty Dillinger. Yeah. Ty Dillinger. Okay, look, that's a fine match. Like, no, no, it's not. Well, I mean, I get why that's not like it's not going to be your number one match, but that's a pre-show match. Like, I don't care, right? Sure. Like, I'll watch that. Tell me, mm-hmm. I don't want to be surprised. I mean, like nobody in the world is going to say, "Oh, I'm going to watch Fastlane to see that six-man tag." So. I don't really have a problem with it just okay. being unannounced. I kind of like when matches are just, you know, randomly thrown together like that was and uh, made to obviously kill time. So, um, you know, it was what it was. Um, you know, uh, the main event was, was going to be okay. The Nakamura-Rusev match was going to be fun. Uh, the tag match should have been better. But, you know, it was a solid show. It, it was what it was. Um, you got a, a nice performance from Ruby Riot. The, the Nakamura Rusev match delivered. The main event was fine. 
Um, you know, and it, it continued to set things up for WrestleMania. So uh, you weren't going to get, uh, well, you got a new champion in Randy Orton, but you weren't going to get anything insane. You, you weren't going to get, you know, crazy things four weeks before WrestleMania. You were going to get everything to set up for WrestleMania. So, I mean, that's what we got, and you, you couldn't expect anything more. I mean, yeah, you, you know, I'm I'm also, I'm also thinking about the pre-shows, and I'm wondering if moving forward, when they stop doing the brand-specific shows, if now the pre-show will mean more, right? Like, you're going to have to yeah. include like, more things. Like a WrestleMania or a SummerSlam or whatever pre-show where it's a title match or it's something like that. Oh, we better hurry up with the show, because I think that actually the WrestleMania pre-show is starting soon. Nice. All right. Well, I just wanted to, you know that stat wife laughed at that oh, one. So oh, I heard. <laughs> I always get I get you know once in a while my jokes get one pop and uh, I really appreciate that one. All right. So <laughs> yeah, I mean I'll agree with you. I will say that I thought the six man I mean the whatever the six pack challenge for the title. I I what I thought it was great about it the. They gave so much time to the Zayn Owens Shane stuff that for for like thirty seconds maybe I was oh my I was like oh my god are are they gonna are they gonna take the title of AJ like just just for a second and I got to give them credit you know if you were able to actually convince me for like a minute or so I just by the way used three different measures of time to explain how I how long I was, like, excited about this for. But there was a short period of time during that match that they got me to think, AJ's through the table. What if some chicanery happens? You know, something, like, really insane. So I, I appreciate that. Rude and or- Orton winning the title. I mean, I really didn't expect it, but I'm not surprised by it. They had a good match. I just didn't want to see Orton win that. I kind of... Right, it- it was a good match, and if it leads to Bobby Roode having a little more of an edge or winning the title back at WrestleMania, probably in a triple threat with Jinder, then fine, great. Uh, you know, that'll be enjoyable. It is what it is, and I don't think this will be an extended run with the title for Orton, so, you know, whatever, that's fine. Yeah, and then he, Jin- Jinder he came out. probably deserved to have the uh, Grand Slam by now, right? I mean, he's been around forever. So it only makes sense. True. I, I I don't know. I mean, I guess this you know sets up a triple threat. Like, I feel, don't you right. feel like there are a lot of triple threat matches like well, that's, kind that's of what out I there? Was wondering like what they were going to do because it, there is potential um, to be like two or three uh, triple threat matches. So I mean, I'm sure you could have one or two or even on the pre-show if needed or. Uh, one just doesn't happen or something like that. I'm not really sure, but it'll be interesting to see how they uh, play things out. The tag team match obviously could have been better, but I'm not mad at them because they're setting something up with the Bludgeon Brothers. I mean, obviously those costumes are still god-awful. Really bad. Yeah, I don't understand, like, why they thought that was a good idea. Although I'm surprisingly fine with the idea of them, you know... Sporting yeah. sledgehammers and are giant. Yeah. They're not even sledgehammers. They're like giant, ridiculous Thor hammers. And I think, like, because of the hammers and because of the gimmick, I'm kind of like okay with the outfits because it's like, oh well, these guys are weird. They should be wearing something weird and not normal. Um, so like, okay, but you know, it, it's more of like a throwback to a, a berserker type thing instead of you know where we are today with just more. This is the person, and here is their wrestling. You know. Yeah, I'm, it's weird. But that's I, fine. Yeah, I enjoy, see. I think what's happening to me is also I'm getting to the point where maybe this is why WWE is sometimes not super. I'm not super into it all the time. I'm getting to the point where I guess we watch it so much, we talk about it so much, we can kind of figure out who's going to win. That. I kind of want some spectacle, and I think that I've been enjoying CMLL because as long, as much as sometimes the in-ring product is not as strong as WWE's product, the fact that they just have these over-the-top ridiculous characters, like, 
I mean, it's weird. I've been but it's explaining like a, Ring of Honor. Well, who are the guys I like the best? Name the guys that I I, that you don't like that I love. Not anyone that's a spectacle. Really? Like the Kingdom? Like Vinnie Marsaglia? That's not a spectacle. What? C- coming out to the ring with with the the it clown balloons and letting them go before he runs right. in. So one guy carrying an axe. A, a mid Carter. Matt Teeve? Okay, well, let, let's be clear. I'm not talking about the fact that the guys I like are always at the top of the card. Well, but what I'm just saying is like... Castle, you, Bruiser, you don't like Silent... Because of the lack of like characters and over-the-topness, but that's like that, that doesn't exist at all, basically, in Ring of Honor. The like, world never... champion is the is the biggest guy. The guy I liked the best from the first That's night a... was El Generico. It... None of those things are, are like super spectacles. Oh, I mean they're over, like, but I mean they're they're more characters. Like than El they Generico are is a character, yes, but like uh, I don't know, like Castle is. is uh, I don't I don't know. I wouldn't look at that as like. Dude, but, Castle... Like Castle, but Castle is like, okay, that's like Nakamura then. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's an entrance. It's a, I get it, but I don't think it's like. I, I don't think it separates that them from WWE in terms of like they have way more of a spectacle than WWE. That's why I enjoy them. Oh so much. no! I mean, let's be honest here. I don't think anybody on this uh, listening here is going to be upset when I say this. <laughs> you know, part of the reason that I'm so into Ring of Honor was because I started to cover them more yeah. for websites, and and you know, I kind of, in some ways, it's almost like my job to watch every minute of Ring, Ring of Honor. So, like, I'm kind of a little bit more, and it, it, there, there's fewer minutes to watch. I guess is the easiest thing to say. Yeah. You know, I, I think that uh, I hate to bang on that same drum, but part of me is just like, man. Because like with WWE, it's like you have to pay so much attention. I know it sounds weird, or at least I, I tend to. Like when I, when I put something like CMLL on, sometimes literally I'm watching that like as relaxation. Like there's no thinking involved. Right, there's course. a dude dancing to, you know, what a Gangnam style in a giant like skeleton costume, and he's right. probably going to be bad. So I can like go to right. the bathroom like, and come CMLL back. CMLL is you're basically watching a cartoon. Yes, but like so that. That I understand. Lucha Underground, like, I understand yes, what you're saying yes. with, with the showmanship. I, I completely get that. And sometimes it's tough. I, I commit myself. Like, when you watch, like, a season of Lucha Underground, it, it's tough to, like, bring yourself back into Raw. Because yeah. it's like, oh, holy shit. Like, this is this is a completely different world of wrestling, you know? And, like, so sometimes it's tough to get back used to uh, the, the normality that, is on WWE. So like, I get what you're saying. I'm scared but... of Marty the Moth. I am, yeah. like, he, fr- no, no, he makes my skin crawl where I am scared of Jay Briscoe, right? Like, legitimately, and Mark Briscoe. No, that's just because he's a real person. Yeah, but that's because he's a real person who I know would demolish me, you know? Correct. Uh, but Marty the Moth, like, creeps me out. Um, <sighs> it, there's so many characters on Lucha Underground that are just... I love Paul London and the uh, the rabbit the rabbit group. Uh, they they are freaking amazing. Uh, Saltador and uh, I can't remember the other guy's name right now. But just the way they dance around and they're just kind of drugged out. And you know, Vampiro is pretty heavy handed about talking to them being basically on drugs. And Striker, these guys are psychedelic. And Vampiro, what? what Super weirdo, like does random stuff, like that's crazy. Yeah. I would love Byron Saxon if he did stuff like that. Of course. <laughs> All right. But anyway, but uh, so basically, that is our our fast lane review. <laughs> I don't know if there is. I, I it was more... it was an okay show. You, there's nothing that you need to go out of your way to watch, and you know, basically, that was it. I mean, I think that's like this ring. This fast lane show felt like to me. What I what you must feel like because I know you say it most of the time when we watch Ring of Honor a lot of times it's I didn't need to watch that like nothing really right and and happened. that's what it was it was solid wrestling it was a little bit of advanced storylines the lower card title change hands and it'll probably change hands again in the next month you know that's exactly what it was so you know 
you, you can't expect huge things from the pay-per-view the month before WrestleMania. It's just, it wasn't going to happen. And I'm glad it didn't happen because if it did, that would have meant something like AJ losing the title. So that's not what I wanted to see. Uh, you know, I'm like looking at this WrestleMania card, I'm extremely excited for it. It looks like a really, yeah. really good and stacked card. Um, so, you know, we, we could talk about that a little bit more uh, later on and in the coming weeks, but, you know, that's what you got to look at. What's coming up? Um, you know, you got to look at what they set up the next days on SmackDown and Raw and, and that kind of thing and, you know, just take it from there. No, I am excited about the WrestleMania card. I, I'm actually, uh, I'm, as I'm seeing the possibilities for matches, I think it's going to be, it's going to be really fun. I, I'm not, I'm not seeing any letdowns so far in the way they're going there. You know, I understand they had to run fastlane because that's like announced and whatever. But I'm, I'm looking forward to that, and I'm looking forward to the end of branded pay per views. Even though I think it's going to mean less opportunity. At the same time, I don't think it matters well, anymore. Yeah, I mean, I, I I don't know what it means in terms of overall um, opportunity on the pay-per-views, but, I mean, if every pay-per-view is four hours, then that's an extra hour of two to three matches that you can add in there. So, I mean, you know, the, that's a way to get around it. And then it should make Raw and SmackDown mean oh, a little yeah. bit more, you know, instead of... and. and I kind of like that um, with Ultimate Deletion. You know, that's, yeah. that wasn't going to be on the WrestleMania card, but we all know that that's a WrestleMania match. So for that to be on Raw, uh, you know, two weeks, whatever it is before WrestleMania, that's a cool thing. Um, so maybe you'll get things like that, where the, the Tuesday before uh, the pay-per-view, Bobby Roode defends the U.S. title against Jinder. You know, maybe you'll get things like that. Um, since they're not going to be on the show. And it'll make the matches feel a little bit more important. It'll make the shows feel a little bit more important, and hopefully it'll be a good thing. I hope so, too. I mean, I think at this point, the the weird thing is, is like they shouldn't just be pay-per-views, right? Like, they shouldn't even call it that anymore. Like, the truth of the matter is, it's, it's a well, big Sunday right? show. Like, they call them live events. Oh, live, events. yeah. I guess network it's just special, my head. They call them. I think, yeah. yeah, I think if maybe you said a network, I don't know. It's weird, but it's like almost like the name that I associate with it is supposed to be like a bigger deal. And yeah. at this point, because everyone's getting it for free, because really, okay, I'm going to say this at the risk of losing viewers. If you order single pay-per-views, I hate you. Like, just get off. Don't well, listen to us. No, because, no. All right. I mean, it, hate is a strong Okay, word. fine. Wrestle, if I you don't order, hate you, but if, you are an idiot. Yeah. If you order WrestleMania, all right? And that's the only one you order a year. That's, and for some strange reason, you're listening to our weekly show about wrestling. Unless you, you only... cannot. Like, unless you live somewhere where only pay-per-view is yeah. available. Then, then I'm sorry. Then sorry I don't hate for you. you. Yeah, I don't hate However, you. Okay. That's fair. I, mean, I need to fix that. If you that. pay 60 or $50 for a pay-per-view when <laughs> it is literally free, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I just don't I don't even... Uh... All right, yeah. So th my point being that they're not really pay-per-views, and I, if they were just like bigger shows, uh, I don't know. I, I think I think it would be different. You know, like maybe even the pre like you don't. <sighs> what if you just had like a really action-packed two and it, a half hours? But it has no. You can't do that for a live event or a pay-per-view. It has to be a little bit longer because. They are more important shows, you know, so they got to feel like they're more important shows. Look, Ring of Honor does it in three hours, man. Right. I, and, but and, their normal shows are, too. And I think Evol and Evolve usually under three. Like, I just think, listen, and especially in this day and age, I just wonder, like, there's there's an attention span, you know. I think if the, the general, I mean, all society, really, I, I think that. There's a sweet spot for how how long you can be somewhere and enjoy it. I mean, people complain I about baseball. I 100% agree with you on that. 
You know, baseball, the reason, the problem with baseball is that it's too slow. Listen, the great part about soccer is I know once the game starts, it's going to be over no matter what, you know, under two hours every time. You know, I'm, I'm right with you in terms of baseball and in terms of soccer and even in terms of certain video games I, I can't play because they are too long. However, I have never one time in my life said, wow, this is too long for a wrestling show. Uh, it's it's not really a thing that happens for me. Um, I Wrestling is three hours. It, like pretty much my whole life, it's been three hours. There was a stretch there where it wasn't, but it just is what it is. Like I, I, I enjoy it being two or three hours, you know? I, oh, three I hours know. is fine, but think about it. The I get what you're saying with the sweet spot, but I don't know. I watch every fucking every uh, pre-show. Like I watch, you know, as soon as it comes on, I'm I'm on there. Yeah, I mean, I do too. <laughs> you know what <laughs> so I mean? I don't know so what to say. I mean, it's yeah, it's difficult. Uh, yeah, but I I think that if it's almost like if if monthly we didn't think they were pay-per-views and they were just like the, a big show for that month like if maybe i just need to look at it differently Th- then it's then it's like oh okay cool you know but i don't think i think part of the problem is like i don't think the title needs to be defended every month you know i think it's like sometimes formulaic when it comes to like the titles and things like that yeah i don't think they need to be all the time defended i don't think but then you're you're the same guy who was here complaining about Naomi oh. last year not defending the title in okay. 30 days. So, well, I get what you're saying. <laughs> However, you know, yeah, it's it's the pay per view. It's the big show. That's when the big title matches happen, and that it, it's the same thing that goes for Ring of Honor or New Japan or anywhere else. The titles are really only defended on the pay per views. That you know, the live events. Well, yeah, but New Japan doesn't have a freaking pay per view every month with the title defense. When's the last time Okada defended the title? I don't. Even, I don't even know. Uh, against Sonata, probably. Um, so like, a little bit ago. It's like once since like once since Wrestle Kingdom. So like twice in the last no, sixty days. A couple times, I think. Uh, Evil Sonata. Oh yeah, but then he's just in the other matches and and that sort of thing, which isn't a bad thing. But there's. You know, those other shows are basically house shows. You yeah. Know, like the Bucks oh, aren't okay. even on them. So you can't really compare them because every big show, he's defending the title. Well, it's the big show. All right. Well, that was interesting. So let's. Uh, so what did you think about Raw? Well, I thought Raw was solid. Um,. It was an enjoyable episode. They set up um, a couple of nice things for WrestleMania that I enjoyed. Um, I enjoyed Brown winning the <laughs> Battle Royal. So what is that? What happens with that? Does he does he pick a partner or does he go by himself? Well, um, I think we talked about this on the show a couple weeks ago that I had read somewhere that the Bars Challengers at Mania weren't going to be um, a current tag team and. So now this makes a little bit sense. Um, but I also read this week that Vince <laughs> hasn't decided whether Braun is going to have a partner or not. Um, I would hope that they have somebody in mind just in case they go that way. Um, but I mean, Elias has to be the guy, right? It would make a lot of sense, wouldn't it? But like, why? Like, because okay, let's let's put this. Okay, so here's what happens. Why him or why? Like I could see him because because I like yeah, like why would he do it? Why would Braun allow it? Okay, so Elias is a little, oh, he's a little like he wants his WrestleMania moment, but he's also and he you know he's he's been having issues with Braun, but he wants his WrestleMania moment and he's like a sneaky dude. So he so Kurt Angle says, all right, Braun, you gotta tell me who your partner is. He's like, I don't want a partner. And then maybe there's a match to determine who is going to be his partner, and Elias ends up winning because Braun. Maybe Braun even goes to interfere, it messes up, and then Elias wins. Maybe that maybe Braun is 
at WrestleMania even maybe. And he's in the match and he's like not struggling, but maybe he's maybe he's got the bar on the ropes and like he hits him with the power slam and Elias like runs out tags in himself and he he announces that he's Braun's partner without Braun. Oh, that'd be you great know, too. Really like agreeing to it. Yeah, that that can make some sense. They have something. So I I I think it's them too. It kind of has to. But you imagine, yeah. okay, here's a weird thought, and I don't think I'm right, because I think that Undertaker's going to accept. <laughs> but what <laughs> if, like, Undertaker just doesn't accept? <laughs> no, sorry, Jim. <laughs> and Cena's like, I've got one more path. Braun, buddy. <laughs> like, what if it's that, too? And then yeah, he went I'm to tag be tag partners with Braun. My God, how do you boo Cena? You're not worth it. I'm going to go face the bar. <laughs> Let's go, bro. <laughs> Cena sucks. It'd just be great. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. So, I don't know. Uh, you know, I enjoyed that. Uh, what did you think about the, the uh, Roman Reigns Vince stuff? That was good. Um, again, Brock no showing. Uh, you know, Roman confronting Vince. I enjoyed that. They are trying extremely hard here um, to get Roman over. And. You know, I won't lie, it's worked on me. So now when he comes out, uh, you could hear, like, a little bit more cheers than than there are boos, and then it flip-flops. So, you know, I I think they're winning people over slowly, and and that's that's the goal here. I'm willing to bet any amount of money that Brock Lesnar no-shows this week as well. Um, Vince saying that, like, he put the Vince stamp of approval. He guarantees it. Ah, that sounds a little fishy. To me. Yeah, it's. Can you believe that the way that they're going to get Roman over is by having <laughs> Roman say that somebody else is Vince's guy? Like that is to have the other guy not show up. It's so amazing. Yeah. Like, okay. You know, Imagine the meeting. This is how we're going to get you over. You know, we're going to say you're not my guy. But you know the. <laughs> Right, and the way that he's doing it is saying, like, yeah, look, like me or, or hate me, whatever, but I'm here busting my ass every week. This guy never shows up. The title is never here. Look, he doesn't even respect you guys enough to show up. And that's a cool thing because, like, yeah, I, I can see that from Brock. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I kind of feel like he doesn't I, – I know for a fact, basically, right? Like, he doesn't really give a shit. Like, he makes money, he wrestles when, when they tell him to, and that's it. And he hunts. Um, you know, but, so, I, I can agree with that, and I can sympathize with Roman, and what he's saying makes sense. Yo, he's so married I'm to not Sable. Gonna... Right? Yeah. What? He's married to Sable, right? Yes. Yo, next week, via satellite, dude's just on his couch <laughs> watching TV next to Sable, and he's just like, yo, I told you I'd be here. I'm technically here, but I'm just here with my wife, you know, Sable. <laughs> like, like, yo, he would, oh, actually, no, never mind. I don't know. No, knowing knowing WWE fans, want. they might actually, like, be like, oh, dope. All right. Yeah, okay, so exactly. but what if he's no. just in the woods, laying down, hunting like deer? No. And he just, just, like, Vince, continuously throughout the show, Vince is going to keep saying, like, Brock's on his way. Uh, I'm, I'm in contact with him. He's coming. He'll be here in five minutes, and he's just never going to show up. And something will happen towards the end with Roman and Vince, and we'll we'll continue that. But hey, that's fine. I enjoyed right. that. I, I liked it. It made sense, and they're trying. Uh, so we'll we'll see where it goes and and how it continues. Um, I enjoyed seeing the preview for Ultimate Deletion and seeing Senor Benjamin and King Maxwell, uh, Wolfgang. Uh, Rebecca, it was, man, it, it made me smile just like thinking that, hey, they're doing this and they're not half-assing it. They're they're giving it their all. They're letting him do what he does. Jeremy Borash is there working it like I said he would be. Um, it, it just makes so much sense. I'm so glad they're doing it right and I can't wait to see it. Well, can you remind me, why is it, why is it Vanguard 2? Vanguard 1 it's got Vanguard destroyed? One. Oh, it's Vanguard 1? Okay, I wasn't sure. said Vanguard 1, yeah. All right. But I'm, I mean, Vanguard 1 might have got destroyed, and 
I'm but I'm pretty sure he said Vanguard won on a promo. I'm super excited about Senor Benjamin. Oh. Uh, I am excited. See, now look. You know what I was talking about? Like, ridiculousness, characters. I am Correct. so hate, into this. But you hate the one character that they've had for the past five years in Bray Wyatt. Yeah. Well, because I think that the way he's presented is like slightly supernatural evil. Like, look, they did it right with Taker, right? They did it right with Kane. You know what I'm saying? Like, they have to win. They had to, like, those guys did major they things. They had to win. Right. They, you know? they, the way they booked him. Hasn't yeah, been that's good. what it is. They kept booking him up. They kept, fault. like, his promo, like, he would kill it. But then, like, his message was falling on, for me, deaf ears when I'm Correct. like, okay. Like, 100%. You know, and that was that was what really, I think, for... But then, like, Matt Hardy comes in, and I'm, I'm super excited about it. So, you know, uh, I don't know. Uh, it, it's, it's weird. Me either. But I'm very excited about Final Deletion. I mean, I kind of... Ultimate, ultimate, ultimate deletion. deletion. I kind of want to... I usually record a podcast on Monday nights. I think I might, like, try to end it earlier, bow out early, because I, I need to watch Deletion... Monday night. I need to watch it in real time because that I haven't watched Raw in real time in a long time. Uh, I'm I think I need to watch Raw in real time with Ultimate Deletion. Yeah, and I think um, you know not watching it live um, or like on a on a slight delay is a problem because I find that when I do that, I have to pay attention to everything and I fast forward most things. So you don't really get to see or appreciate um, everything that's going yeah. on or some of the little things. And it's not as enjoyable, you know? So uh, maybe that's why you're, you're not enjoying it as much. I think you're you're right. struggling to get through some things, but you know, just, just try to do it without fast. Like just watch it. Like it's live. I got to do the commercials, but just watch everything else. Like it's live, you know, unless it's like, you know, you know the kind of things you can actually fast forward. But. No, yeah, it makes sense because I think what ends up happening, peeling about the curtain a little bit, is since I end up recording usually at eight o'clock, I don't start raw live, and then sometimes when I end, CMLL is just starting and it's live, <laughs> so I find myself putting that on and then watching raw later, and watching it on a weird on a weird delay. So I think that's also right. the uh, what is it called. Basically, the the feeling of of not knowing, you know, the of uncertainty with matches, a lot of times is is lost on me. Um, also, so I'm gonna do it this week, and I think uh, we're gonna have. I think I'm gonna have a more positive view next week. What I have been watching live so. is Mix Match Challenge, <laughs> because hey, don't watch regular WWE programming. Go to Facebook Watch and uh, <laughs> watch the Mix Match Challenge, but. I I don't know. Now we have it, this week. It was Rusev and Lana versus Charlotte and Bobby. So now, I think we're down to like Charlotte. I said Charlotte and Bobby. Yeah, Charlotte and Bobby Root. I think we're we're almost at the end. Like we're, we're getting pretty close. It's right. They are. They sent out something today or yesterday about um, vote for which team you want to see brought back. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty sure right now it's three, right? It's Braun and Alexa, Miz and Asuka, and Bobby and Charlotte. So I guess they bring one more back. We have some type of semifinals or losers bracket or something of that. And then we get the finals. Imagine the fan, like the fans vote back like Goldust and Fox. That'd be great. Um, you, you got to figure like Asuka wins this, right? Like. Even if the Miz gets pinned, I feel like that's still a blemish. Like she shouldn't even be in a match that she loses. So, but I almost think that's one of she the... she can beat Alexa in the finals. You know, but oh, no. See, I'm gonna go with I could see Alexa and Braun winning it. They have that and whole Braun love thing. Braun killing the Miz, All right? Braun killing the Miz, and then Alexa holding over Oscar's head. Right, because like part of this, right? Or Oscar just beats Alexa like she knew she would at WrestleMania, and, and then Miz season. holds it over Braun's head, you know. Or Charlotte could beat no. Oscar in the finals, 
and then not beat her, but like she, her team wins, and then she could hold that over Oscar's head. I just can't see Oscar losing. Like I, I can't see her being on the losing team. It, I, I don't know. I feel like she lost the match. She didn't get pinned, but she lost. All right, that's fair. I mean, as a heel, as I always have been, if I wasn't pinned, I would Correct. clearly say that I didn't lose. But yeah, so uh, yeah, I mean, mixed match challenge has been enjoyable, and um, also enjoyable has been two hundred five live. Um, this week, uh, you saw the Tazawa and Itami uh, team, and so I guess that's our first uh, kind of cruiserweight team here. Uh, which, okay, that's fine. That's a team that I've literally made in the 2K <laughs> video games this year uh, since day one. So, I yeah, mean, me it's, yeah, it's them. I throw in Nakamura. Sometimes I download some other New Japan guys, and it's Los Angobernables de Japón. So, you know, it just, it's easy. Um, yeah, so, you know, that that's fine. And then we got Cedric versus Roddy, which, oh, oh man. Jesus. Really freaking good match. Um, I, I enjoyed the crap out of it, and I had no idea who was going to win, and it was fantastic. Did you happen to catch that? Yes, that match I did see. I mean, wow. Now, can can we just sit back for a second and think about the irony of what? Feud, Don't do this. Don't do this. Go ahead. What? What feud? Put Cedric Alexander on the map in Ring of Honor. Cedric and Roddy. Correct. And that propelled him to WWE, where then they hired him and all that good stuff. And now he beats Roddy again to go to to the finals in uh, WrestleMania. Uh, that's that's kind of freaking cool. Um, you know that that's that's a story that. Like, you know, that happens in movies and, and shit like that. Uh, so it, it's really cool to see something like that uh, go down and, and be the case. Uh, I'm super happy for Cedric. Uh, I thought he deserved to be a guy in the finals. And uh, I, I couldn't be any happier for him. It's funny because this match is amazing. What's amazing about this match is that once they announced the tournament, you know, and Cedric had been – was. Sub- was looks like he was going to be the number one contender. Yeah, yeah he was going to beat Enzo. You know, I basically said at the beginning, Cedric's going to win. This is not. Uh, I'm not super into like super. I wasn't super excited because it just seemed so clear that he would win. But wow, they this match really <laughs> it really made the tournament more exciting. And it made Cedric's ascent to that spot deserved. You know, it didn't feel like perfunctory. And I, now I don't even know. I mean, the easy, I mean, the easy booking, right, was is you put a heel in there and you put Gulak. But man, Mustafa Ali's been really good. His he's been done some like promo work that's been really good. Uh, now, I, I don't know if you recall this, but after we went to uh, 205 Live live, uh, I said that that was it. Mustafa Ali had made me a fan and at the beginning of this tournament he was a guy that I, I said I, I hoped you know this this would be a nice showcase for him and I'm pleasantly surprised that he's here in the semifinals. Um, I've enjoyed his, his little run here. That, that guy is, is really good. Um, and so yeah, like I, I wouldn't mind seeing him and Cedric just tear it up at WrestleMania, but again, Gulak's character is really over. Yeah. Um, then they flip the switch, and now his, you know, kind of angry Gulak is also over, and I think that would be a good story to, to tell him um, just kind of punishing Cedric and Cedric having to fight back and escape submissions and escape the beatdowns and come back and win it. So, you know, uh, for a match that, like, we might have seen in Evolve, four months ago to be on the WrestleMania card, pre-show or not, that's kind of awesome. Yeah, no, I I gotta I gotta agree there. I, I really like what they're doing down there. I you know, I've loved Gallagher, period. But now that he's not being ridiculous, he he's more appealing. 
Gulak. Listen, <laughs> I loved the PowerPoint, but without that, he he's a more threatening. It's they. It's amazing what's been done there. And if at this point, if I had to pick a, okay. I mean, honestly, for me, NXT. What the only reason why I can't well, outright say I would pick 205 Live to be the only hour of WWE program I would watch during the week is because Gargano's on NXT, and I need to see what happens with Gargano and and Champa. But other than right, that, and Alistair Black and Adam Cole and Ricochet and Dijak and all of those guys, uh, EC3, it, it's outrageous. Well, true. I haven't seen. Um, yeah, I mean, I haven't. You know what it is? So, is it hasn't hit the tapings yet to that point. Right. Um, well, Ricochet has been around and he's in the the U.S. title match or the North American oh, title, right. whatever yeah, yeah. the hell. Um, they have three titles. So yeah, on, on so there. all that stuff is coming up soon, and that'll be great. Um, from this week, um, I just uh, Adam Cole fought Pete Dunne in a pretty solid match, and then the Undisputed Era jumped Dunne, and that's when Roddy came out to save Dunne. So. I mean, that makes a lot of storyline sense. And then I guess you go from there with them uh, in the Dusty Classic and as a tag team. Uh, we discussed that a little bit last week. Hopefully, um, you know, now this is another little wrinkle uh, that's out there. Um, the Undisputed Era is in this match with um, Authors of Pain and Dunn and Roddy at TakeOver. Um, however, Bobby Fish is hurt. And Adam Cole is in the North American title match. So unless Adam Cole wrestles twice, which is possible, but as we've been calling for for the past three takeovers, this is a perfect spot for someone like a Jack, right? Like Kyle O'Reilly needs a partner. Here's a Dijak. Um, so, you know, something like that could work. Um, but Tom Malone will tell there. Either way. Uh, takeover will be amazing, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I know. I mean, I don't want to call it now, but I still, you know, there's a very good chance that Takeover is the show of the weekend. Yeah, as usual. Although Bloodsport, but because that's only because Bloodsport and Spring Break are technically not on the weekend. Sure. All right, and uh, I guess you want to hit up SmackDown real quick. No. Uh, the only thing on SmackDown <laughs> that was any good um, was uh, I enjoyed the end angle with uh, Sammy and Kevin beating the crap out of Shane. Um, it'll be interesting to see where this goes um, because Shane made the match uh, Sammy versus Kevin at WrestleMania, which, hey, that would be awesome because, again, here's a story of a guy, two guys who – started fighting in the backwoods of Montreal and uh, for them to be on WrestleMania now would be kind of cool. Uh, so that's fine. But I, like, is Shane going to recover in time to be the third man and make this uh, another triple threat? <laughs> or, you know, is this just going to stick as a one-on-one and maybe Shane shows back up at the show or something like that? I mean, I Shane could be the special guest ref. But like we, I feel like we just did that with True. Kevin and AJ, you know. Oh uh, yeah. So uh, I don't think he's the ref. Plus, like, why would he be the ref when, like, they both hate him? But he I don't know. he could like cause a divide between them. I don't know. But here, I mean, like, yeah, I guess that's what he's going for already. Which, but I mean, like, that divide was already there, and you know, just Sami Zayn showing his true colors as, you know, not a great friend and bad human being. So, uh, you know, I, I don't know. But, again, either way, uh, I like this angle. I've enjoyed this whole storyline. It's something that deserves to be a mania. And, you know, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, well, I, I, I second that, that that idea. I mean, I, I mean, the only thing I disagree with here is obviously that Kevin Owens is the the bad guy in this situation. And uh, I don't know why Sami Zayn keeps, to trust, keeps trusting him, but. I'm I'm sorry. Have you not watched the past two weeks of mm, WWE I'm not, TV? I'm not sure if there's really Sami Zayn just turning on Kevin Owens, pinning him, saying the friendship doesn't matter. No, that, that, that no. First of all, he offered the pin, 
And Kevin doubted him so much that he said, you know what? If no, you're going to doubt no, me, Kevin I'm going to win. Kevin was a real friend who uh, said, I don't want to pin you to win this way. You know, even though you stabbed me in the back last week and pinned me, you know, I don't want to do that to you. And look at what Sammy did. So, you know, it's just actions speak louder than words. All I can from, say from is, young Samuel Zane. all I can say is, ladies and gentlemen, this would be a perfect time for me to remind you that we want to hear from you. Send us an email, runningwildpodcast at gmail dot com. Tweet at us, Running Wild L W O S. Find us on Facebook, Running a Wild on Wrestling. Tell us what you think. Are you t- hashtag Team Sammy or are you hashtag Team Kevin? And I think we're going to get a lot of responses. Oh, yeah, that That's hashtag. Team Sammy. Congratulations on the win, Team Kevin, just like every other match they've ever had. By the way, if nobody submits any any feedback to us next week, then I will take uh, I will uh, will obviously have to flip a coin, but I think it'll basically be Sammy. We'll just add up the number of wins that they have against each other and see who has the most. The number of wins That'll does not determine who's the better person. I'm pretty sure that it exactly does. All right. Well, anyway, you guys can catch us on social media there. You can follow my work over at rohworld.com and pwponderings.com, a covering Ring of Honor. You can also tweet me at rich underscore L-A-C-O-N-I, where I talk about tons of wrestling. And you can follow my hashtag Project Rewatch Mania, where I'm <laughs> on top of watching everything that we talk about this week. I also watch WrestleMania and lead up to the next one. So, uh, anything else before we get out of here? I don't believe so. All right. Well, um, yeah. Looking forward to Final Deletion. We're going to have some updates, obviously, with Ring of Honor moving forward. And uh, so you guys better strap in, put on your safety belts. Just, you know, want to be careful out there. We're on the road to WrestleMania. And we just want to remind you that you've been listening to the podcast that is just too sweet. For Rich and Runs, this is the host of Ring of Honor Wrestling, Ian Riccoboni, signing off. Be sure to join them next week for another episode of the Running Wild Podcast.